What else you got? What else you got in the gas collection these days? Um. Well, we've been, uh, you know, focused on the the show a lot and getting those cars finished, and that's been uh, uh, a lot of what we've been doing. And kind of that's that's the new thing in there. So the the Shelby Pantera has been pretty fun to uh, to work on, and that was a an actual real deal treasure hunt. That was one of the funnest things I've ever had to, the pleasure of, of doing in my life. And we we literally um, when we got the Pantera, it had no engine in it. And, um, through Shelby and our connections there, cause we've known Shelby our entire lives. Um, we narrowed it down to the, uh, junkyard where it was. And then we went in and actually found the Chrysler NASCAR engine that Lee Iacocca gave to Carol Shelby and then married it back uh, with its body. So this is literally a you know, kind of a Carol Shelby's Resto Mod Pantera. Yeah, so wait, ba- back it up real quick. For those who don't know about <laughs> this Pantera, uh, it, yeah. th- th- what is the background on this beside it just being Carol Shelby's? Well, uh, Shelby and uh, De Damaso go way back together, and that's a whole story on its own that we didn't have time to tell. Uh, but that, that's basically where you get the Mangusta and the Cobra from. You know, obviously there was the Shelby Cobra first, and and uh, uh, Shelby and Data Masso were working together on on some projects, uh, Peter Brock project, and um, then they had a falling out, and that's how the Data Masso Mangusta came about, and the name was Cobra Killer, you know, on purpose. But at the same time, they had this friendly rivalry as well, and and Data Masso was always trying to get Shelby to be his distributor. So he would, you know, kind of tease him with these cars and it never, you know, Shelby ended up never actually becoming the distributor, but, you know, he had these Panteras to play with. And uh, uh, then, you know, he liked to play with cars and hot rod them out for different things. So he he was always looking for an excuse for something. And uh, I don't know the entire story, but he wanted to uh, uh, use it for something. Uh, And and then the idea came about where uh, Iacocca was getting on on Shelby about creating the next Cobra. And this is obviously after uh, uh, Iacocca had moved over to Chrysler and, you know, the minivan had brought uh, Chrysler a lot of success and they wanted to bring something that was uh, a sports car again. And Iacocca, obviously uh, working with Shelby in the past, uh, wanted to bring back uh, the the new spirit of the the new Cobra, which obviously uh, eventually became the Viper. So uh, this was an excuse, uh, uh, probably one of many excuses that Carol would have used to get something like a a NASCAR engine and uh, hot rod out this Pantera. And they kind of used that as an excuse to uh, create a test bed for the Dodge Viper. Listen here, fucker. this car kind of... (laughs) I'm uh, going to need three NASCAR engines. Get them over here. (laughs) Set them down. So they, uh, you know, obviously um, they ended up going with a V10 and a Viper, but Shelby was really... Uh, uh, wanting to use this uh, V8, um, uh, which had a twin turbo set up from Gail Banks, who oh, again shit, brought it really? back to life on the show. It was a NASCAR uh, motor with twin turbos on it? Yeah. Yikes. And, uh, wow. Marine turbos, actually. Oh, of and course. that was the thing. So um, <laughs> this is the engine turbos. that Shelby wanted to use and push for. And actually, there was some technology that came out of this Pantera that ultimately was used on the Viper. Nothing super major out of it. But it is really cool that we have this kind of piece of history that sits between the Cobra and the Viper. Yeah. Uh, and it's totally 80s as well, which is totally Well, we're looking <laughs> at a picture awesome. of the, the interior right now. It has the luxury seats and the luxury doors, which are really funny. They're like wrinkly yes. leather, and it's hilarious. Uh, it looks it's, exactly like the kind of car a Texan would be doing cocaine in. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, it's a white it's interior awesomely with polished 80s. wood. Yeah. Burl wood and, everywhere. <laughs> and that's why we just cleaned up the interior. I did not want to redo that. It was, look, this thing only had 1,300 miles on yeah, it. You can't it was barely that. driven by Shelby. So Did you drive you know, it, though? It, oh, yeah, dude. Wow. It was fantastic. And uh, honestly, a little bit scary. It's got to be scary. That, I had it out on Willow Springs and, uh, you know, where Shelby tested out GT three fifties and the Cobras and, you know, where a lot of racing was done, uh, back in the day and, you know, in Cobra versus Ferrari, it's, 
it's really cool because it's in there. So I get this we joked really about kind of Ford, surreal we mo- it, moment, man. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari lot because they didn't dress up the track at all. They just plopped uh-huh. old cars there, and it's like, yeah. okay, yeah, it just it still looks like that. But did you put the turbos oh, right. on it, or you just put the NASCAR? Oh, yeah. oh it has oh, turbos back on it, too. Okay, cool. Uh, what's really cool is that, you know, we get Gail Banks on the show, and he actually talks about the car and, you know, something he hadn't thought about him like he says decades and uh, he was able to put it all back together for us with the turbos uh, because that engine came right out of the junkyard they don't show like the work that we did and everything we did to get the engine ready but uh, Gail uh, uh, helped us with that and then uh, put the turbos in it we got it running beautifully and I I took it out on Willow Springs and then uh, got to have some fun with it so there's some there's some perks to my job too which is awesome yeah no shit I uh, how wait? I feel like we buried the lead with finding the engine in the junkyard, though. Can yeah. we go back to that? that? Yeah. Can you give me, give me the ver- how, how does that happen? So, you know, like a lot of Carol's projects, just kind of got forgotten and thrown in the corner, and that's what happened to this Pantera. So it sat in the corner of Shelby for a long time, and. I don't know why they pulled the engine out of it. I still don't have a good answer for it, but that's something that was very Shelby. Ah, pull that engine out, it, put it in something else, and it probably got pulled out and forgotten about. And then everything got sold off, and um, we were able to uh, track it down, actually, from somebody that worked uh, previously at, uh, at Shelby and tracked it down to dick's towing and god bless uh, dick he's he was awesome <laughs> did uh and we did dick we know what he had? through the yard yeah he he because uh there was a connection there and uh that's how we traced it back to uh back to uh, dick's towing and found it in the junkyard wow that's so awesome it, it was yeah it was a totally surreal moment and absolutely incredible did it need to be completely rebuilt or was it actually able to be kind of like you know cleaned up and run well it, yeah it didn't need to be a it, it turned but it still needed a, a obviously everything on it, it, it the the turbos uh, uh were redone um there were some things that were some new parts that had to be put on it but overall it it still turned and it was a believe a pretty good engine for That's sitting there pretty, in, a, wow. in a junkyard for 30 years. Or yeah. yeah. NASCAR engines always seem like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Right. That must. What is the More power. power. Yes. 